In 1999, the U.S. government accused Martin Armstrong of masterminding a multi-million dollar Ponzi scheme. No one has ever held for civil contempt for that law. Marty is held in jail from 2000 until 2006, not because he was convicted of a crime, that's this pocket over here, but because he's in a standoff with the government. Hello, I'm Martin Armstrong. I'm the longest person ever held in civil contempt in American history with no charges and absolute insane allegations. After every 18 months cycle, Judge Owen hold another hearing. Mr. Armstrong, are you ready to turn over the assets yet? No. Boom, right back to jail again for another 18 months. So he followed the 18 month rule, but instead of releasing him like the statute says he's supposed to do, he just used another opportunity to put him back in for another 18 months. So that just kept going. They had these 18 months cycles. He was kept in prison because the government wanted his computer, which could predict wars, the rise and fall of nations. Universal Bank of Lebanon calls me on the phone, says, listen, could you make a model? I said, sure. Put it into the computer, and the computer says, your country is going to completely fall apart in eight days. He says, so what currency do you think would be the best? And I'm like, what? The CIA called, and I was in the office, and Marty came in afterwards and said, well, they basically want me to give them the model. They realized that the model could forecast the rise or fall of a nation. So you can understand why these people want access to his code and his model. He said to his mom, they want what I've spent my entire life developing, and I'm not giving it to them. Martin Armstrong was a legend, a financial wizard who advised major institutions around the globe. His secret wasn't insider information. It was a discovery, a computer model he called Socrates that predicted major world events, market crashes, wars, based on a hidden cycle of human behavior. He called the 1987 crash to the day, the 1998 Russian default, the Nikki Peak in 1989. The model was working with terrifying accuracy and the wrong people started to notice. I've been an analyst since the 1960s. I've watched markets rise and fall around the world. I've lived from Europe to Asia to America. I started studying law, but I didn't really uh, particularly want to go in that direction. So he pushed me into computers. I created the first fully functioning artificial intelligence system uh, in the world. It has operated with a track record of nearly 50 years, and it has done far more than I ever anticipated. I was developing this largely for trading. And what happened was that I didn't realize uh, that it was ended up in forecasting wars, the economy, and everything. So over time, I began to realize that somebody always knows if war is going to take place. By the time 1998-99 come, I had stood up in a London conference and I said, "Look, Russia's going to collapse," and I give it you know, a little more than maybe 30 days. It's August 1998, and Russians are lined up outside the banks. The Kremlin just defaulted on its domestic debt. I didn't realize at the time someone from the London Financial Times had been in the back of the room, and they put it on the front page of London Financial Times in the second section and said, Armstrong says Russia's going to collapse, and we're going to have nukes running all over the place. That's largely when the CIA came in, the government came in, they shut down everything, seized all the accounts. They wanted me to uh, go to Washington and create this model for them. And I said, look, it took me a long time to create this thing. I said, it, you know, I don't want to go down to Washington to do that. I said, we'll run any study that you want. They wanted that source code, which is text. We went to source code. I said, not getting it. Sorry. I was told, no, we have to own it. If I didn't turn over the source code to my computer, that they were going to shut down the company and fire all my staff. And that even my lawyer, they took away. And he said, this has got nothing to do with assets. 
This is basically trying to coerce you. In 1999, U.S. prosecutors indicted Martin Armstrong, alleging he conspired with Republic New York bank traders to steal millions from Japanese clients. In 2000, the court demanded Armstrong turn over his Socrates source code. Over the next several years, Judge Owen repeatedly re-jailed Armstrong, ultimately keeping him locked up for over seven years, the longest civil contempt stretch in U.S. history. In 2001, Republic New York quietly pleaded guilty to defrauding Japanese clients, admitting the disputed accounts always belonged to Armstrong's Princeton entities. By 2002, the bank agreed to repay $606 million to investors under a court settlement. Finally freed in 2011, after the Supreme Court agreed to review his case and recognized there was no justification for such an unprecedented overextension of civil contempt, Armstrong walked out of prison. This is largely what has taken place. The bank ended up pleading guilty. I had uh, an interview with the Japanese press and I told them the bank took the money and that they better come over here and sue the bank otherwise you're never going to see a dime. So all my clients from Japan did that. I cooperated with them. The government also then put a gag order on me to prevent me from helping my clients against the bank. So the bank ended up pleading guilty. You can Google this up. Republic National Bank, H HSBC, agreed to return all the money to my clients and nobody would go to prison. Wikipedia refuses to say, as the rest of the media, that one, I never stole any money, two, I had no restitution, and three, the bank pled guilty, returned the money, and <clears throat> um, nobody wants to tell the truth about it. So it's just one giant cover-up, mainly because I refused to cooperate with the government back then, and nothing's really changed. So this is very common. Uh, they now get involved in what is being called lawfare. They went after Trump to try and stop him from running. They've done the same thing. They tried going after Bolsonaro in Brazil, Rio Le Pen uh, in France. Um, the former head of Pakistan, they put in prison. Uh, R Romania, they've interfered in the elections. I mean, they, they, they do whatever they want to do um, to win. So I hope that explains what my case was about and why to this day we have Wikipedia, etc., refusing to report the truth. People have gone on there and tried to put in that the bank pled guilty they take all that information out. When I came out, I did a conference in 2011, within a few weeks of me coming out, and we had over a thousand people there, and I had to turn down a thousand. And I asked people, why did they come? The general response was, <clears throat> after what they did to me, they said, now we know we can trust you. You're not one of them. So I hope that explains everything to the best of my ability.